So, some of you might recognize this place from some of my other videos here. And I am not alone. And I'm not with Stephanie this time. I actually got John with me from the 80K Addicts back here. And uh, <laughs> though, though pike season may be open, uh, we still kind of got trout on the mind a little bit. So we came back here to my secret spot. We're gonna get set up. We got most of our gear out here already. I gotta go back for my canoe. He's gotta go back for a bag. But uh, we made the slog in, a little muddy, a little rough in places, a lot more uphill than I remember. But uh, but yeah, we're gonna about to be set up, probably have a drink after, some food, and hopefully some good fishing. So uh, stay tuned for an awesome adventure. The rain's picked up on us a little bit since we got out here, but uh, as you can see, camp is pretty much near set up. I can hear John closing in on his sleeping pad there and getting that all set up. Give you a look into mine. We've got my Adirondack pillow that always comes with me. The Nemo Tempo 20, no liner for it this time. And the big Agnes air core there. It should keep me plenty warm tonight. Blows in only in the 40s. And yeah, I got all my other bags in here, my clothes, TP at the back there, book, a train on the bag that carries my batteries, and then charging stuff for the GoPro, all that. All secured away in there. You know, I've got the jacket I always bring with me here. Any fishing stuff in there. I've got the saw with me. John's got his axe. And uh, we are just closing in here and getting all set up. And hopefully going to enjoy a few great days of fishing if things go our way. Yeah. All right. We have camp all set up. It's misting a little rain on us. But we still decided we were going to get out here for a few hours before dark starts to creep in. See if we can maybe catch a few. I've been dying to get back here. You know, as you guys know, this is the place where I made my very first video, uh, where I spent a week in the fall. This is just my favorite trout spot. And uh, hopefully I can share that with John a little bit and show him why I love this place so much. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna get out into about the right depth here. I'm gonna find the run I usually use and uh, we're gonna see if we can find a few brookies in it. Come on, let this be a real nice early brookie. It's a brookie! Nice. Wow! Right off the bat, baby! Oh, uh, I haven't got it up yet. It's decent though, not huge. Beautiful, beautiful. Wet the old hands, not that it really matters. It's already very wet out here. Oh, we're hooked right in the corner. Perfect, perfect. Hey now, it's not the big ones that we were catching in this last spring, but look at those beautiful colors. That black mouth, those very pronounced white fins not worn off in a hatchery. These are wild brookies right here. They're spawning and they're competing with the bass. Surprisingly, somehow they're doing very well. And I'm gonna give him a chance to grow even bigger by letting him go there. We got a lot of food with us and uh, I'm sure the brook trout are under enough pressure with the large mouths that are in this body of water. So I'm not really, I'm not planning on harvesting any unless I really gut hook one or something like that, but uh, Wow, feels good right off the bat, man. Within a few, within a few minutes. I hope John gets some. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. 
Cast my wobblers right back out. And just troll real slow. And I figured I'd kind of talk for a moment about uh, how I fish for trout here. What I, uh, what I do, what I use. And it's all pretty simple and probably pretty standard if you talk to other Adirondack fishermen. A, uh, a lake clear wobbler tied on to a barrel swivel with about 12 to 14 inches of more monofilament going past that down to a bait holder hook. And you could put a trout worm on there, you could put a dilly on there, you could put a night crawler on there. It don't really seem to matter too much actually what you put on the end of there. Which, uh, which you know, bear saying, uh, you can put a smaller spoon on there instead of a hook with a worm. You could put a Rapala. You could put a Panther Martin spinner. You could put a rooster tail. There's a lot of different things you could throw on the end of a wobbler there. And all you do is you cast it out behind your canoe, let a good bit of line out, depending on how deep you want it to roll. And you just very slowly paddle your canoe. No, almost, almost trying to not even move it really, just giving it a slow, gentle forward motion. You wanna see the tips doing basically what you see there if the camera's able to pick it up that light flutter back and forth you don't want it spinning in the water and creating twist in your line you don't want it you don't want it up near the surface you know you don't want to be moving too fast there you just want to move it a slow gentle troll and that's how i do it i've had some success with it and i hope to have more success with it in the future Yeah, I guess it might just be the one brookie for me tonight. I'm getting a little cold, getting a little wet, getting a little hungry. I think it's time to dry out, eat some food, and uh, relax for the night. And hopefully that one brookie I got so far is just a sign of things to come, and we'll be able to maybe find a few more before this whole thing is over. But yeah, I'm getting right back up near where the campsite is. I'm gonna pull in. Wait for John and uh, probably call it a night. Yeah, we fished our hearts out in the rain out there and uh, only managed to come up with one brookie for all of it. So we're back up here now, doing up some hot dogs over the camp stove here. Well, you know, the little, would you say make this Catadine? Catadine, it's, uh, it's made, made by Catadine, but it's an Optimus. Okay. Optimus Vega. Yeah, and uh, we got some good drinks here. Oh my God, I didn't even know we had ice to go with it. Oh, I put my ice in plastic bags, so like it'll, it's a Wow, and... look at that. But uh, yeah, we're just getting everything sort of situated here and these dogs will be done soon and we'll be eating. Here you go, brother. Awesome, thank you, man. Ooh, that's good. Cheers. Cheers indeed. To health and to happiness, the Polish say. It was a, uh, it was a good rough day. Oh yeah. Well, it's about 6:30 a.m. here at this undisclosed trout spot, and uh, man, we are just waking up here. I threw all my gear on, I'm making my way down the canoes right now. Oh, let's go see what kind of conditions we're dealing with out here today. How beautiful that is. Let's see if we can find a few fish, huh? I think I've got a fish here. Either that or I am dredging something up. I might be just dredging something up. No, this is fighting. 
Oh yeah, I got a brookie. Oh yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, my stringer's in the net. Oh, uh, ooh. Ooh, he's a little bit of a bigger one. Oh, he's got some fight. Calm down, calm down. You're all wrapped up in my line. There we go. There's another beautiful fish right there. Look at those colors. So pronounced. That big black mouth. Man, that's a gorgeous fish right there. Man, I just, I am so happy to have caught that fish this morning. That one put up a little bit more fight, had a little bit more size to him. It's just another beautiful fish out here coming out of an Adirondack lake like this. It's, it's unbeatable. I mean, this isn't the crazy action that Stephanie and I had last Memorial Day, but this is still just some great fishing, you know, some great ambience, you know, the birds. I mean, just look at this view I've got while I sit here. Even with an overcast sky, I mean, just look at, I don't know if the camera can see it, the mist hanging off the top of the trees there, the birds making their noises, John is on the other side of the lake trolling there, it's just, I don't know, words in this camera can't, can't put into perspective what I see up here for you guys, you gotta get out here and see this for yourself, you know, it's just, magical almost I think we got another one on wow this is turning into a bit of a banner day oh this is a nice one wow look at that oh my gosh she's all over the place can I get him yeah Number three. Wet my hands. Look at that. There we go. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is getting into a bit more of the size that we were catching last year right here. That's a beautiful brook trout right there. I apologize for my podcast going. Like I've mentioned before, it's the uh, Two Guys in a River podcast all about fly fishing for trout. And uh, I, I just like listening to it while I'm fishing. That's a beautiful fish, though. Look at that. Release him back into the water. those cliffs up there. I wonder if anybody ever tries to rock climb those or anything like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, as you can see here too, it has just turned into an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day out here on this undisclosed lake. John's up ahead of me fishing a bit. I can see a loon out there. All kinds of birds have been calling this whole time. Hey, I think John finally got one. I'm glad I did what I did here. I put him on the other side where I know it's been productive and I took uh, this tougher, more. Uh, there's a lot of down trees, a lot of easy snags over here on this side of mine, but there are fish over here. I'm so happy he got one. I would have felt so bad taking him out here and telling him how good the fishing is and having him come away not catching a fish and me having a few under my belt already. So, we're both on the board, we're both probably going to be feeling good, it's definitely some time for some breakfast. Oof. Stomach's growling. Can 
gonna whip up some bacon and pancakes for breakfast. Oh, that's gonna be good. Yeah, so I got the camp stove rolling right now. Got some bacon in there. Just gonna let that crisp right up. And once these guys are done, I'll make the pancakes right in the bacon grease. Very healthy. <laughs> Very good for you. I got some broken up chocolate in there. Got some hot chocolate here. I'll be, I'll be wired. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's been a great day so far. So there we go. That is the breakfast of Brook Trout Hunters right there. Not too bad. I'm gonna dig in before it cools down too much there, but uh, it's looking to be a good meal. Yeah, we decided after eating some breakfast there and uh, getting all the dishes cleaned up, stowed away, getting everything put back and our camp all straightened up that there was nothing else to do but get back out here and fish. So that's what we did. Hopped in the canoes, and I'm just backing myself out of the little landing where we keep them. Gonna spin around, I gotta re-rig up my one line. I lost my tried and true silver wobbler on the very last pass coming in this morning before eating. I got snagged up, I tried to get it loose, and the monofilament just snapped. Eh, what are you gonna do? You know, pick up a new one when I get home. Yeah, it's getting to be that tough midpoint of the day here where the fish just kind of don't want to cooperate with us right now. So we're back in camp. We got a lot of stuff sitting out to dry right now. You know, things got a little damp yesterday. But uh, I'll probably process up some firewood here, find some stuff, drag it back, and get it ready for tonight. I ended up getting back out on the water here. Uh, it's about five o'clock now, actually. I processed up a bunch of wood earlier, made some lunch, and got in my tent for a little while to sit down and read, and just ended up taking a nap, falling asleep there. But uh, I'm up now. John's already out here somewhere. He got a 30 minute head start on me, and uh, I'm just probably gonna fish till dark, see if we can find any more brookies, and hopefully maybe have a little luck out here. That would be great. Wow, he's still got a lot of life to him. All right, I'm gonna wet my hands quick. Show him here. Wow, get a quick measure. Holy cripes. It's a 17 inch rookie. All right, I'm gonna put him in my net. 
Well, if you want to Yeah, it's starting to rain on me a bit out here. You know, I should probably call it a night with that. I got a real nice fish. Hopefully he lived. And I'm just gonna go in, work on some dinner for us. I'm not sure what we're eating tonight yet. I'll have to talk to John about that. But uh, we'll definitely have a fire tonight. Definitely roast some s'mores, because I know I missed that last night. And, uh, you know, just try to make better of the night than being all down about that fish like that. Uh, what are you going to do? And the more I think about it, honestly, I guess the better it is I just leave him in the water if he's got energy left to him because he's got a better chance of living in the water than he does in my frying pan. So I guess that's really the only way to look at it. So... Yeah, I'm going to get this boat in up on land, flip it over in case it really starts pouring out, and get on with the night, see where it takes me. I have a feeling there's maybe going to be a few Jameson or Jaeger drinks involved, but we'll see. <laughs> Well, now that we're back in camp, John's got some burgers going here over his stove using the cold handle frying pan there, and they smell amazing. And I'm just trying to boil up a little water right now. We'll use it for these instant potatoes. Those things are amazing for when you're out camping. And yeah, we got an owl hooting over there. We, I caught some nice fish today. You caught, you caught a nice fish today as well, yeah, though. You know, and uh, it looks like it might really rain on us tomorrow, which would suck, but we'll see. But, yeah, it's been a great day. Yeah, John has done us up a masterful meal here. This is an amazing burger. The jalapeno and the cheddar and everything in there, that's unbeatable while you're sitting by a fire in the woods. Peepers going. It's been a great day. Yeah, John and I woke up to, as forecasted, a good bit of rain out there. It's wet, it's a bit miserable, so we're kind of moving around our game plans a little bit here, packing everything up. We're going to leave the fishing stuff as the last thing we take out. And maybe do a few passes around the lake once the car's all loaded up. And then it'll be easy to just haul our stuff out of here back to the car. And back to civilization eventually. Back to Stephanie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the game plan for right now. And if it changes, well, you guys will see it on camera. Well, camp is all cleaned up. Oh, we also almost left this line here. <laughs> Yeah, we're just getting ready to go and kind of taking a taking stock of everything around here. Everything's all cleaned up. The only sign that we've ever been here is going to be this block of ice that eventually melts. I've got my big 110 liter bag on my back here, tent on the outside. I'm going to grab the kitchen duffel here. John's got a little less weight in his canoe this time to hopefully make it a little easier on the way out. And... Uh, that's pretty much going to be the end of another trip here. I really appreciate all of you who follow along, watch my videos, like and subscribe to them. It really helps out. Let's me keep getting out here doing this. And, uh, you know, I just love seeing that you guys seem to enjoy my content. So I'm going to keep it coming. Should have a pike fishing trip coming out not too long after this one. So that should be cool to see. And, uh, yeah, that's probably about it. Film a little bit walking out and... We'll be heading home. Another great ADK trip though. Ugh, mud. You just gotta walk right through it, right?
Yeah, a little bit of bonus footage here. We stopped in at the North Country Market in Old Forge. Uh, I love stopping in here for something to eat on the way back. I picked up the 80K Cuban. And John, you got the Diablo, Diablo right? Diablo, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna dig into these now, and uh, yeah, that'll be the end of a, another great trip out here in the Adirondacks.